Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day everyone. So today we will continue our lesson on engineering mechanics chapter 2 which is related to the force vector. Alright, so let's proceed. So before we proceed with our lesson, let us take a look on the objective of today's lesson. Okay, the first objective is if you already finish this lesson, you will be able to show how to add forces and resolve them into components using parallelogram, triangle, and Cartesian methods. The second objective is to express force and position, determine their magnitude and direction, which is by using Cartesian vector. The third objective is, which is the last objective of today's lesson, is to determine the angle between two vectors and the projection of one vector onto another using dot product operation. So at the end of this chapter, you will be able to fulfill all of those objectives shown in the slide. Alright, now let's take a look on the next lesson. Alright, so the first lesson of today is the vector operation. So let's take a look on the general principles of vector operation. Alright, as you can see here, this is the bridge tower. So the bridge tower is stabilized by cables that exert forces at the points of connections. So as you can see here, this is the bridge tower. And right now the bridge tower is stabilized. So how does it stabilize? It is being stabilized by using cables. So cable will exert forces at the points of connections between the bridge tower. So in this chapter, we will learn on how to express all of the forces of this cable as a Cartesian vector. And then you will determine and you will find the resultant force in order for you to find the most optimized force in order for you to stabilize this kind of bridge tower. Right. So this example of a tower this is the example of a tower that has been held by three different cables. Alright. So as you can see here, the tower is so stable. So how to make sure the tower in, in, in place? So how, do, how you want to make sure that the tower is not falling down, right? It's not um, slanted and so on. So you will learn on how to do it in this chapter. Right. Next, we will take a look on the scalar and vector. So what are the differences between scalars and vectors? Okay, so scalar, the example of scalar such as mass, volume and others. So that is scalars. But vector, we have the example of force velocity. So if you have a force or if you have a velocity, you can consider it as a vectors. All right. So how about the characteristic of scalars and vectors? So for scalars, scalars only has a magnitude. Either it is positive or either it is negative. For example, mass. So mass is in kilogram. Right? So it only has, for example, 5 kilograms. Okay, but it doesn't have a negative 5 kilogram, but it is having like magnitude only. It doesn't have any direction. Alright? So it is, for example, 5 kilograms only. So that is scalars. Okay? And the vectors, it has magnitude and direction. So it has both. Okay, for example, force. For example, force is 50 Newton. 50 Newton to where? To the right, to the left, upwards, downwards, and so on. So for vectors, it has both. It has magnitude and it has direction. So that is the characteristic of scalars and vectors. Next. It is all about addition rule. So if you wanted to uh, summarize or if you, if you wanted to summation all of the scalars and vectors, so in terms of scalar, if you wanted to add it all together, okay, you can just by using simple arithmetic, so simple mathematics. So you can directly adding all of those uh, scalars all together. But what about vectors? So in order for you to add all of the forces, all of the velocity in vectors, you need to use parallelogram law or sometimes we are using triangular law okay 
So that is the addition rule between scalars and vector. And you will learn on parallelogram law inside this chapter. All right, next is the spatial notation. So what makes it difference between scalars and vector in notation? So scalars, there are no special notation. So it means that you can just write it like five kilogram. You don't have to bold it. You don't have to put an error and so on. Okay. But for vectors, you need to put either a bold font, you need to put a line, and you need to put an arrow. Okay, so you need to put uh, either one of them. Okay, so that is the special notation that you need to put for vectors to differentiate between scalars and vectors in your calculation later on in this subject. So you must remember the special notation. All right. Okay, next is the multiplications and divisions of a vector by a scalar. So right now, we wanted to multiply between scalar and vector. For example, here, we have the vector A. You know why we call it a vector? Because it has a direction. Okay, so this is vector A. And then we multiply scalar 1, multiply with vector A. So it will become like this. Okay, and then we multiply 2 with vector A. So originally vector A is the length is only until here. Okay. And when we multiply it by 2, the length must be longer. Okay. Because this is 1A and this is 2A. Alright. So you must know how to differentiate that. And the representation will be in terms of the length of the line direction. Okay. Or the arrow here, as you can see. Right. Next, we change the direction of A. So this is the positive of A. And the negative of A is just the opposite of the positive of A. So if the positive of A is going towards here, the negative of A will be going toward the, po the opposite of positive A. Okay. The directions. All right. Okay, next, we multiply negative 0 0.5 with A. So, this is negative A. Negative 0 0.5, it means that the line should be shorter because it is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is less than 1. Okay, that's why the line is shorter. Okay? Alright. So, next, let's take a look on the vector operation magnitude and directions. Right, as you can see here, we have two vectors. We have vector A and we have vector B. Both vector has the same directions. As you can see here, the direction of the arrow is just the same. But the length of the arrow is different. So it means that it has different magnitude. Okay, the direction is just the same, but the magnitude is different. So we can consider it A is not equal to B. Right. Next, as you can see, A and B has the same length, but the direction is different. A is going towards here, and B is going towards here. So we can consider it as not equal. Vector A is not equal to vector B because magnitude is just the same, but the direction is different. Okay, next. As you can see here from A and B, a and B has the exactly same magnitude. And what about direction? The direction, as you can see here, it is parallel to each other. So it means that vector A and vector B has the same direction. So we can consider it as vector A equals to vector B. Alright. So next, we will take a look on a simple addition of vector. Okay. Right. To perform vector addition, vector quantities follow the parallelogram law of addition. Right. So what is actually parallelogram law? Let's say you have two vectors, vector A and vector B. Okay. And then you wanted to add it all together. Alright. So you combine the tails of A with the tails of B. Okay. And then what you should do here is that at the head of the arrow of vector B, you draw a parallel line parallel with line A. 
and then at the top of the arrow of um, vector A, you draw a parallel line of vector B here. Okay, first you connect it tails with tails, and then you draw parallel line A, and you draw parallel line with B. Okay, so parallel line must start with at the, at the top of the each arrow. Okay, and then this is the intersection between the line that you draw just now right so you need to draw another line that starts at the center of the uh, of the interconnection of each vector goes towards to the intersections of the line the parallel line that you draw just now and then it is actually a resultant force r so r equals to a plus b so this is resultant force which is the product of addition between two vectors okay so first you must draw parallel line with a and parallel line with vector b okay it must start with the head of the arrow and then you have the intersection line here and you draw another line another vector starting from the uh, connection center here goes towards to the intersection and that is considered as resultant force okay all right next we also have a special case where we use triangle rule okay we use sometimes we use triangle rule to perform vector addition for example if you have vector a and vector b here so if you wanted to use a triangle rule what you should do here is that vector b the tail of vector b must be connected to the head of vector A as you can see here so this is uh, the head of vector A connected to the tail of vector B so you connect it to become like this and then from the tails of vector A you connect it to the head of vector B and it will become the resultant force R equals to A plus B right so similar you can also connect vector B to vector A. So it means that the head of vector B connects with the tail of vector A. You connect it together and then you draw a line from uh, the tail of vector B to the head of vector A and it is becoming the resultant force. So that is some of the example of the addition in vectors. Either you can use parallelogram or you can use triangle rule. So it is depending on how you construct your addition. Right, next is subtraction. So how you want to subtract the vectors? Right, let's say you have vector A and vector B. And you can see here, the vector A is going towards this way. But the vector B is going towards the same direction with vector A, as you can see here. But if we wanted to use the parallelogram vector subtraction, you need to make vector B to become the opposite direction of vector A. Okay, I'm sorry. You, make to, you, you need to make vector B to become the opposite of vector B, the direction. So the initial direction of vector B is here. So in order for you to make a subtraction, you must um, make it to the opposite direction, which is here. Okay? So that is why it is becoming like this. A... It is initially like this lah. Okay, A. And then B is initially like this. Okay, let me draw so that you can understand. Right, so B is initially like this. Positive B. Okay. And then you don't want to add it together. You want to subtract A and B. So you must draw it in the opposite direction which is here. This is negative B. Okay. And then as you can see here, what you can do here is that you can do a parallelogram law. Okay. As usual, you draw the uh, parallel line of negative B. And you draw a parallel line of positive A. And you draw a resultant force here. Starting from the center to the intersection line. Alright. Or you can also use triangle law. So you can use either one lah. But you need to make sure if triangle law, the head of one vector must connect it to the tails of another vector. But for parallelog parallelogram law, the tail of a vector must be connected to the tail of another vector. 
so you can use either one so that is the subtraction of vector all right next is vector addition of forces finding a resultant force so as you can see here initially we have force 1 and force 2 all right so we draw a parallelogram between force 1 and force 2 and you are finding the fr which is the resultant force okay and then in order for you to solve for example to find the angle to find the resultant force you can use a triangle for example as you can see here this is a parallel parallel what do you call parallel law all right and then you draw the resultant force and you can convert it into a triangle because this is the just the parallel line of f2 so from here you can convert it into a triangle and then you can use law of sines or law of cosines to the triangle okay so this is similar with what you have learned in your mathematics for example cos equals to sine square and so on all right so by using this triangle you can find either forces according to the question that has been given to you okay all right next is as you can see here this is the vector addition of forces right so we will learn this lesson in the next class okay guys right so i think that's all for our class today thank you and if you have any question please ask me in the telegram group thank you guys assalamualaikum and have a good day everyone